Hello and welcome to the Monday, January 29th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier just doesn't get tired of finding new and interesting ways how malware is encoded. The latest trick that Xavier came across is in the form of batch files or .bat files, these Windows script files. Well, uh, typically they include like a script by themselves, but in this case, actually, the file just contained comments, uh, Double colon at the beginning of the line does indicate a comment for a batch file. The trick here was that these comments really then included or represented multiple different payloads that could be extracted from the file. There was a two-digit indicator as to what particular payload uh, was being encoded in a specific line and then a line number. Now, the line numbers weren't initially sorted, uh, but based on using the line number, then a PowerShell script or a simple bash script or whatever uh, can be used uh, to then extract a specific uh, script, decode it, and then execute it. Xavier then took a closer look at the malware that was extracted from this particular batch file. It was a connection to a command control channel that used port 443, but was not uh, encrypted with a TLS. So just some simple sort of command control protocol, lots of pings and pongs, which is kind of typical to just establish that a connection succeeded. Antivirus total score was pretty low with only 1 out of 60 antivirus tools identifying this sample as malicious. We got an interesting issue for users of the routers from Fritzbox. They're particularly popular in the German-speaking parts of Europe. And I'll link to an article that describes the problems here that is in German, didn't find a good English one. The problem here is that when you own one of these routers and you want to connect to the internal admin page, you usually just use fritz.box as a domain name. Lots of other routers have domain names like this that they're using to reach the internal um, admin page. It's usually some variation of the company name that makes the router. The problem is that recently the .box top level domain was officially issued and made active and it's exclusively used or supposed to be used for web3 websites for whatever reason maybe related to the web3 part of it here where you uh, need to sort of connect a wallet to it and such fritzbox did not register the fritz.box domain and it has now been taken by some entity that is advertising nfts This could more or less happen uh, to any vendor who is using sort of a custom uh, domain name uh, for uh, purposes like this. Most vendors use a top level domain that is their trademark. And I think that may protect them a little bit uh, better here, but uh, definitely watch out for this. And of course, uh, any of these router specific domains will only work if you are using your router as a resolver. TLS is of limited use here unless you have an internal certificate authority that you trust that you can use to create a certificate for this particular domain name. Public certificate authorities cannot be used to issue certificates in this case. And for the Jenkins users out there, we now have a proof of concept exploit for CVE 2024-23897. Uh, This uh, vulnerability was patched last week, so still uh, pretty hot and new. The vulnerability does allow any user to read the first three lines of a file without authentication. How bad this can get, of course, depends on what files the attacker will be able to find here. If the attacker does have some access to the system, then they may retrieve the entire file. So you better get this patched rather quickly. 
And we have some interesting issues with Google Ads. Again, Google Ads are, of course, well known for advertising malware on occasion. This latest issue that was uh, put forward by Malwarebytes last week shows that some of these ads are targeting Chinese-speaking users. When I first saw the headline, I was a little bit surprised because Google is not available in China, but of course there are plenty of uh, users outside China that are using Google and that speak uh, Chinese. Some of them are looking for encrypted messaging services or VPN systems and the like that they may use once they return to China itself in order to keep communicating with people outside China. And this appears to be sort of the target audience here where uh, users are that are looking for software like Telegram and the like are being redirected to malicious versions. Maybe it's uh, because some of these uh, users do have a hard time getting to the legitimate versions. It may also be more easier to fool them into downloading than the uh, fake version because they don't necessarily know that well how the legitimate version works if they usually don't have access to it. Definitely uh, something to be aware of and as always, browse with an ad blocker and don't trust the top few search results in Google that they automatically link you to the trusted software. They may as well link you to malware. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And thanks to everybody who is liking this podcast, who is giving me good reviews on various podcast platforms. And hey, if you are listening from China, I would uh, like to know if someone from China is actually listening. So thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.